turning 38 special or 357 brass, such as this, and making them into these 38 special short cases. Next on Let Builders for Life. Morning, Lead Bullets for Life here. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, I purchased a few items um, on e uh, not eBay, but on uh, MidwayUSA.com uh, to convert 38 Special Brass into 38 Special Shorts. Um, the old way I was doing it, I was using my RCBS uh, case trimmer and a power drill, and then trying to uh, uh, adjust the uh, the drill to cut so far into the shell. Unfortunately, you know, it, it, it doesn't, it, it varies uh, from measurement to measurement. Uh, it's not that accurate. So I try to get it as down as, as low as I could. And so far it's down to 7.781 or 88. And I need to get it around 0.775 to match the Smith & Wesson uh, case length. So what I did was I ordered a few little helpers. This is a 38 Smith & Wesson. It's the uh, case length gauge, and also this is a uh, three jaw spinner for your drill. And what this does, it's going to attach to your three jaw chuck, which is this here. And what this will do is you're going to add this to your shell, clamp it like so, spin the drill on it. You're going to take this cutting ball, okay, and you're going to place the uh, the Smith & Wesson case length guide through the case, and on this uh, ball here with the cutter on it, you're going to take a drill, and it's going to spin it to the exact measurement. It's going to be a lot more convenient and faster uh, making these 3 special cases, which I do love a lot. Um, I haven't been shooting more, uh, a lot enough of them because I've been waiting for uh, my tools to come in to go ahead and uh, start making mass production of short cases. Why do I make short cases? Well, after seeing my videos and experimenting with the uh, and looking re his researching history on the Smith and Wesson uh, Colt short and Smith and Wesson 38 Smith and Wesson, I saw how efficient, based on my own personal testing, how these are. I mean, uh, you basically take half the charge of a 38 Special and the same bullet weight, shorten down the case, and you'll get the same velocity and performance out of the uh, shorter case. Also, not to mention, uh, lower standard deviation, shorter spread, and just plain more accurate. And I can see why for many years, the police departments used the uh, 38 Smith & Wesson uh, for that reason. They're just more economical. Uh, they work, and, you know, there's not as loud as well. When you got a half the uh, the capacity of powder, uh, it reduces the uh, noise. And um, I never heard of any old time cops losing their hearing because of their shooting. And it could be because these are probably no louder than twenty twos. <laughs> if maybe you know, I might be exaggerating, but I'm pretty sure they're more than twenty twos. But not as loud as a full power thirty eight special goes. But uh, I don't know what if hearing protection back in those days uh, was detrimental to uh, shooting. I'm pretty sure it was for certain calibers, uh, but I've never actually witnessed any uh, police departments in the old vintage videos using uh, hearing protection, you know. So, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and move on, and uh, we're going to show you some of the uh, equipment I'm going to need for uh, this test. All right, so to start off with, we're going to need our uh, case trimmer. This is the RCBS uh, case trimmer. I've had it for many, many years, and as you can see, I've adjusted the... Uh, spacer uh, rings here to match the length of the 38 Smith & Wesson dimensions. Like I mentioned before, it was it, I got it to like 0.788, so I'll have to trim it down a little bit using the uh, uh, the Smith & Wesson. Uh, and then, of course, you're going to have, have a little attachment to it to uh, attach it to the, uh, the nut in the back of the uh, handle. Now, there is a... The, a device you can add, an adapter you can add, removing this nut. Now, I tried removing this nut, it's extremely tight, so I just left that as is. For now, I don't want to ruin it anymore to where it, it wouldn't uh, unscrew. So I've been just using the uh, the screw here and let it run slow. And then, uh, oh, some of my stuff fell through. <laughs> uh, get it down to the 
case length I want it and then removing it and then uh, using the uh, Lee equipment to uh, shorten the case down okay let's get started all right let's go ahead and add our uh, shell and this is a 36 caliber pilot and take the pilot you put it into the uh, appropriate uh, chuck remove the pilot do not keep the pilot inside it'll get stuck once the burrs start to uh, form inside and then from there just sort of it'll drill out a counter counterclockwise I'm oh, sorry clockwise Should do it for now. Remove it, and uh, you're going to take your uh, case trimmer, like so, deburr it a little bit. This is just the first process, just getting down to length. And the purpose for this is because uh, the Smith and Wesson pilot won't uh, fit a 38 special case too short so you have to shorten them down a bit just to get them started and we'll show you that in a minute here so yeah get some of your metal shavings out don't have to be perfect guys I don't tell you why because you're gonna be retrimming it anyways okay so all right let's just go ahead and measure it out and let's see a zero right here zero I uh, hope there's enough lighting here, guys. I can't tell. So right now I got 7.786, you know. So that's a, a pretty good start. And then from there we can use the uh, the tools to make it shorter. One thing to mention uh, before you uh, trim your cases, make sure you decap them and resize them first so you get the maximum size and uh, have it cut as short as possible. This way you get an accurate uh, measurement. All right, right now we're going to remove the, uh, the screwdriver set and add our spinner chuck. There we go. And then from there, we're going to add the uh, three-jaw chuck, which is here. You don't have to torque it too tight, just tight enough. All right, so it looks something like this, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna add your shell, like so. And you adjust it for the shell foot all right looks just like this guys okay all right so we got it attached let's go ahead and give it a try mm, look pretty good all right Point seven seven five on the nose. From uh, trying the um, drill method and the hand method, the hand method gives me a little bit more precision. So I'm gonna stick with the hand method. Okay, so right now we got about 10 and we're gonna make another 40 more. These are all measured out of point seven seven five. Be perfect. And this is just uh, brass cases mixed Remington, uh, mostly Remington, some Federal. But uh, I think they'll work uh, extremely well for the project I'm going to be uh, using them for. All right, so I made a little more adjustments to the um, RCBS case trimmer. So what I did was um, adjust this screw here. And I put a uh, .775 shell into the uh, uh, collet here. And then just kind of like stopped it here and then um, re-tightened it down. 
like so. These bolts are kind of old and stripped, so I, I do my best on them. And so what I'm going to do now is just uh, run it like so. Okay, so our total of uh, 38 short cases are, are 40. I made about 40. And then the reason why I didn't go and make 50 is because I needed to get this video out. And this is a time-consuming process, by the way. Anyways, um, let's talk about uh, the methods I used to uh, cut down the, uh, the cases. Number one, I used a um, RCBS uh, case trimmer. The case trimmer I have is extremely old. And the, um, the adjuster for the cutting depth has these small little... Uh, hex screws inside and they're really 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 fragile anyway they, they kind of stripped on me over the years and so uh you know so when i tried to uh use the drill to uh cut them shorter it went too, too deep and i ended up with shorter case so i didn't have the both of those and start over again so what i did was i had to make a little modification on the trimmer itself by adding some duct tape and uh to a point where the duct tape would uh help and hold at, a, at the right um uh depth for cutting so it would come out like around 0.785. So from there, what I would do, I would either, one of two things, take a case trimmer and go ahead and trim them down. Then from there, deburr, and then measure out again until I got 0.775. And um, this other method that I would use was you take a file like so and just run it down about five times or so, depending on your, your cutting depth or the measurement on it. Until so you got to 0.775, and from, from there, just go ahead and uh, you deburr it and uh, put them aside in your box. Now, if you're not, if you don't really care to make these by hand, you know I do it because it's just something I, I like doing. You know, creating my own uh, things like that. Uh, you can always go on online and uh, you can order them from um, Starline Brass, and they sell for like 500, 100 to 500, I guess. Uh, you know, in a in an order, and um, you can use them as you can use a 38 Smith and Wesson uh, brass and, and size it down to uh, a 38 short. So uh, you know, it'll work that way too. But anyways, um, let me talk about the efficiency of using a short case like this. You take a 38 special round, and uh, you know you have a 158 grain bullet for example, or 148 grain Simon wood cutter, and um, on water cutter and then what you do is if you take the round you can shake it you can hear the powder going back and forth so there's a lot of airspace in there right so what happens when you're firing your 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 uh, 30 specials you don't get a really tight pattern you might get some um you spread out you know uh, your your groups gonna be spread out a little bit you know and so what happens is that sometimes the powder inside your cases are not uh, case sensitive okay which means that uh depending on the position of the powder you're gonna have a different pressure curve and that's going to result in a different velocity. And that velocity can act, you know, determine whether your bullet's going to go left, right, center, down, up. And uh, that'll cause your spread as far as uh, shot per shot. So with a shorter cases like this, you got more bullet in the case and half the powder charge uh, in the case itself. So you have less airspace. Less airspace means you have uh, the same velocity, if not more. Um, you're using half the powder, which means you're saving uh, money on powder economically wise and your extreme spreads are going to be a lot more closer to uh shot per shot as far as like a deviation maybe 20 feet per second things like that uh at best but you're gonna have some deviation of course you know because nothing's perfect you know primers are gonna have different uh spark that kind of thing uh even cases like this you know depending on the net tension and the brand uh will give you a, a shot shot variation based on uh, neck tension itself or lack of neck tension but anyways, uh, overall, the short cases will give you a little bit better efficiency as far as uh, accuracy goes. Now, for many years, law enforcement had used these short cases besides the 38 Special. They used 38 Smith & Wesson, not particularly a 38 you know, Special Short, but 38 Smith & Wesson with a 147 grain bullet or uh, a 200 grain bullet. And um, there was quite a good reason for them. After testing these uh, rounds out with my own uh, loads, they ex were extremely accurate, um, shot per shot. Uh, they uh, weren't as loud because you're only using half the powder charge, but you got the same velocity, you know, so they hit uh, the same as the 38 Special. So I can see why they used them a lot. 
Now, uh, there is a couple of uh, these history hunters I saw on the internet. It was a documentary about the uh, the Ma Bakker shooting uh, with her and her boys against uh, state and federal uh, law enforcement in uh, Okawaka, um, Florida, uh, 1935. This gun battle lasted uh, six and a half hours. That's a lot of ammunition spent. Anyways, uh, these uh, uh, history hunters had found cases still in the in the ground. A lot of the cases they found were 38 Smith and Wesson. Believe it or not, they found 38 Special. They didn't find any automatics. Uh, I think they found a few automatics. Uh, 45. They used Tommy guns back then too. Uh, I think they had to use shotguns. There was also rumor that. One or two of the agents had 357s when they first came out. And uh, well, that's just a, you know, someone just said that, and I don't know how credible it is, but the, the Smith & Wesson 357 did come out in 1935, so it's possible they had one or two, you know, for, for test purposes. And they were talking about it. maybe one of the uh, suspects was shot with one of those. But anyways, um, this is what they found on the ground, the short cases. So they were actually used for many, many, many years, you know. So even nowadays, we still use short cases, 9mm, as a matter of fact. Uh, you know, 40 Smith & Wesson, you know, 45 ASP, there's short cases as well. Anyways, guys, I don't want to go too far into this, so uh, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, this is Lebo's Boats for Life. If you have anything uh, you want to add, like to see, uh, go ahead and put it down in the uh, comment box below, and I'll get to it as fast as possible. But uh, go ahead and keep those comments coming, and I can answer them as fast as possible. Lebo's Boats for Life, thanks for joining me today. Uh, go ahead and... Um, Rate, subscribe, and um, we'll see you at the next video. Bye, and take care for now. Take care.